Hello everyone, I'm Becky with Creative Haven YXE and welcome to my video tutorial on how to make a mini traveler's journal. I hope you enjoy, so let's dive right in. Okay, so now we have our inside sheet of cardstock for the inside of the cover cut. And this is seven and, or sorry, seven and one eighth by nine and one eighth. And we have our vinyl cut. We have our piece of vinyl cut. And the vinyl is cut for the cover. It is cut to uh, nine and a quarter by seven and a quarter. So now we're just going to glue these two pieces together. Now, before I glue this down, what I've done is I've just taken my corner rounder and rounded the corners for this one. And after I get it glued down, I'm just going to use my scissors and trim around here so that we've got the same curve on the cover as well as the inside sheet. So let's do it. and then we'll score it down the middle and fold it in half to make our cover. All right, so now that our cover is dry from where we glued our cardstock on, you're gonna score down the middle, just fold it down the middle. I like to use my bone folder to make sure I've got a really good crease on there. And there we have it. So now that is the cover of our traveler's notebook. So I've gone ahead and decided on and cut the pieces that I want to use for the inside cover here. Now for this particular journal, I don't do it with all my journals, but for this one, I have cut it down the middle. So here is the sheet. I've cut it down the middle because I don't wanna to have to sew through another layer and I don't want another layer tucked in there for folding. So for opening and closing and folding my journal together. So I didn't uh, keep it one sheet, I cut it down the center. I also like that look, it gives it a little bit more of a, a junky traveler's notebook look, which is again what I'm going for. So the next step after you've decided on your pieces and cut them to size, mine are, should be four and one sixteenth. So each one is four and one sixteenth by seven by seven and that's what I've got here so that's going to give me enough of I should have a eighth of an inch all the way around these three sides and then a little extra room in the middle just to fit my signatures nicely next thing I'm going to do is round the corners just here and here so just on the outside corners of each to match them up with the cover and what we've got there so it'll just be, da, da, da. voila. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop this other side and then adhere them down and I will see you back here. So the cover of our, the inside cover of our traveler's notebook is ready to go. And our outside is ready for decorating. You can decorate it at this point if you wanted to do that now, or you can wait until the end and decorate it then. Uh, absolutely your decision. I like to have most of my project planned out before I start working on it so that I have an idea of what I'm putting where and when I should be attaching it. 
So we're going to now, what I'm going to do before we attach our signature in is I'm going to put our eyelet here uh, and get ready to attach our closure. I find it easier for me to punch the eyelet and do it now than once I've got all the pages sewn in. So that part of the cover I'm gonna do now. The rest of it, the decorating of the front and the back, I'm gonna save that till the end so that I know what pieces I have left over. Uh, I've got a few set aside that I wanted to use for the cover. Um, and then I sort of have an idea of how it's looking and speaks to me a little bit more than of what I should put where. You can also do that right now. Definitely a good time to glue anything on here that you want or don't glue anything at all. If you wanted to leave it just like this, I think that looks great. You're welcome to do that as well. So now it's time to get all of our pages ready to be assembled into our traveler's notebook. So the first thing I'm gonna do is all of our pages are cut down. So each page is now nine by seven. So nine inches by seven inches. Then we've scored it down the center here at the four and a half mark. So that when each page is folded and ready to go, each uh, page is four and a half by seven inches. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my corner chomper and I'm going to round all of the corners for all of the pages to match our cover. If you don't want to round the, page, the corners, you certainly don't have to. It is whatever looks best to your eye. I find that a rounded corner, they tend to hold up just a little bit better, which is why I like to round the corner for most of my projects. Just cause again, I get the, they tend to last just a little bit longer less damage, and I really like the look. So I will continue to round the corner for all of these. Awesome. So once we've rounded all of the corners for all of the pages, we're just going to assemble them. You can choose to put them in whatever order you would like. This is my favorite, so this is the one that I wanted on the front of the signature, but you can put them in any order that you would like. And you're just gonna stack them. Perfect. And they've all been scored and folded. And I, of course, I'll use my bone folder just to make sure we've got a really good crease on each page. So this is what it's going to look like. So I like to go through it a few times once I've decided how the order that the pages are gonna go in and just make sure that is in fact how I would like it to be. Then if you're doing any extra stamping on it, if you wanted to put uh, stamps anywhere or little uh, stamp sayings, now's the right time to do that. You'll wanna do that before you assemble it because it's a lot easier to stamp when you can open it flat, take one page at a time. I'm not gonna be putting any stamping in here, but if you chose to, this would be the time to do it. Also, if you wanted to sew uh, ribbon into here just to make some little extra embellishments like we've done, on one of our other one of my other journals is I sewed just a little strip of ribbon in here I used a zigzag stitch and sewed it on uh, just for a little extra decoration again now would be the time to do that you don't want to try and force it through your sewing machine once you've got all of your pages sewn together but because I'm not going to be doing any of that the only thing I'm going to do here is I'll add some pockets and some extra embellishments at the end um, after I see how it's all come together all right so now we're ready to start working on our closure. So what I've done is I have chosen the image that I wanted to use for my closure, which is just going to get wrapped around the traveler's journal. And I've glued it onto another piece of cardstock so that it's just got a little bit more stability to it. I've used the same cardstock as I did on the inside cover. So now that this is ready to go, we're going to mark where we would like to uh, punch our holes. We're going to punch our holes and put our eyelets in. So you can use either a pencil or whatever you would like to mark them. But I'm actually going to you measure them, mark them exactly where you want. You want two of them, uh, one on either side. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to use this right here because I really like that uh, on both sides. We're, and then I know that they're nice and even and that's where they're gonna be. So I will use my uh, chomper puncher. For this one, I'm using my large hole, so I just line it up, see where I want it to go, and I want it to go just right over top of that already existing thing. I'll do that to both sides. Perfect. 
six. Now we will. All right, perfect. So there we go. We have our eyelets in there ready for us to thread our elastic through. Next step is that we're going to do the same thing. Um, put mark and put our eyelet in our back cover. So I want it on the back of the cover because it's going to come from here and wrap around the journal. So we're going to measure on the inside where the center point is and then we'll put our eyelet in there. So now we have our uh, eyelid in the back for our closure. We have our closure piece that's going to wrap around the front and hold it with elastic and come on and off. Next is to choose your elastic and get it all assembled. So this is the elastic I have chosen. It's just jewelry beading uh, elastic. You can use something thicker. I have used hair elastics uh, before on my smaller journals. You can use, as long as it's not gonna rip and paper thin. You can also double it up, which is what I'm gonna do on this one, just because, uh, the main reason I'm gonna do that is because I like the look of it. So, what I like to do at this point is I will put my signature inside so that I have an idea of how thick it's gonna be. Then I remember that uh, I'm gonna be decorating this, these pages are gonna get bigger, there's gonna be lots of embellishments on there. So we want it sort of snug on there. So that's how we're gonna measure how long, and I've got it doubled. So you want it to have some stretch to it, but you don't want it to be pulling and straining already, just sort of right on there. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing, and because I'm doing it double, I'm gonna cut it right here. Then we're ready to thread it through. Also, at this point, I'm going to melt the ends of the elastic just so that they don't uh, fray on me. Perfect. So we want it running across the back. So we'll put it in and then have it come up through here. So that's how it's gonna go. Just like that. Gets wrapped around. We're gonna push both those in, inside and then tie it off. So what I will do is sort of measure, so I don't have a whole lot left, but there we go. Just a little bit.
All right, once I get all four pieces threaded through to the back, I'm just going to even them up. And there are several different ways that you can tie these. The way that I'm gonna do it is just, we're gonna make a loop and then pull it all through. Makes a bigger knot, harder for it to get pulled through the eyelet hole there. All right, and once I've got that, I'm gonna pull it really tight. There we have it, so that's not going anywhere. You can trim, I've got one here that's just a little bit longer than the other. And because I like the look, I'm gonna trim that one as well so that I've got four ends. And same as before, give that all a melt. Make sure that nothing is going to fray on us. And now we have our closure. Look at that. So then that's the closure for our journal. I like to do the closure before I do the decorating. The reason I do that is because now I know that this is a focal point on the cover of my journal. So I don't want to put like a big image back there. I want to put something little up here. Then I'll probably put uh, the trip and the date. Just a little bit of decoration on the front. I'm not going to do too much on this one. And now we are ready to punch our holes in our signatures, punch our hole in our covers, and get everything sewn together. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to measure and mark where we're gonna poke our holes, then we're gonna use our trusty awl and poke all the holes. If I was doing more than one signature, what I will do is I'll make a template for where I'm gonna put the holes, but because we're only doing one signature in this traveler's notebook, I'm just gonna mark it right on the inside page so this is the very center page. That's the one I'm going to mark. So I will take that, take my ruler, and make sure that I'm marking right in the middle, so that right on the score line. So we know it's seven. So the first hole we're going to do is we're going to put it right in the middle. So it's going to be at seven and or three and a half. And I'll just put a little dot. And then I like to do mine an inch apart. So then we'll do an inch from there and an inch from there and an inch from there. So because I think I'm going to be getting a lot of use out of this and I want to take it for my trip, uh, I'm going to put extra holes. There are so many different ways that you can sew signatures into your cover or into your book. You can use some book, different book binding techniques. Uh, it, they're, the sky's the limit when it comes to sewing your signatures in. But for this technique, we're just going to do a very simple stitch forward and back and then tying it in the middle. So I'll demonstrate how to do that. So for this one, because of the uh, width, the seven, we've got the center hole and then two, four, six. So we have seven holes here. They're all an inch apart. Fabulous. So we've got the marked on the inside most cover, on the inside most page. We'll take the rest of our signature. Again, I like to double check, make sure I've got all of the pages lined up and going the right way. Then line that up, push the center in, push that in about as, just to make sure you've got it really well. And then I will use clips, one on the top and one on the bottom, just so that I know I've got that lined up. And I just have a piece of foam underneath here. I have used a phone book before. You can use your cutting board if you like. And then you're just gonna take your awl and poke your holes all the way through. Now, I like to do the cover separately. Some people will do it through everything all at the same time. I don't like to do that. I like to mark, do the holes here first on my pages and then I will go and line them up and put them through the center uh, of the cover. You can do them all together, but especially if you're doing more than one signature in a book, you don't wanna poke them all at the same time. So I will show you how to do them separately. So we poke all of the holes through our signature. 
making sure to go through right on your score line there. And our signature is now ready to go. Next, we're going to mark and measure and do the same procedure on the cover. All right, so now that we have our holes poked in our signature, ready for them to get sewn in, I'm going to mark and poke the holes for our in our cover. I like to do them separately, so that's what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the outside, the first page, the cover page of the signature, and line it up here where it's going to fit in, and just a little bit inside of the score mark here, the center. We're going to just line that up where we want it to sit, top and bottom. Take my pencil, and I'm going to mark those holes. So we'll mark each of those holes. and mark them right on the center line there. So once we've got all of those holes marked, I'm going to take my handy dandy little foam sheet. Again, as I mentioned before, sometimes I will use a foam book if that's what I've got handy, but I've got this here, so we're gonna do that. And I will just use my awl and poke all of the holes where we have marked them. Once we've got all of the holes poked, just make sure you've got them poked all the way through, which we almost do. Let's give that a little, there we go. A little extra on those. Now we are ready to assemble our uh, traveler's notebook. We're going to take our signature again and make sure all of those are lined up. We're going to line that up here. Everything's looking perfect. Perfect. Then you're going to choose your thread. So there's lots of different options, lots of different types of thread that you can use for this. Um, I like to use a cotton. Sometimes I'll use an embroidery floss. You can use um, many different things. I've used elastic before. Um, but today we're going to use Baker's Twine. One of my favorite things to use it's just got a little, it's a little bit heavier. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're going to be using today. Just some Baker's twine. We have a darning needle here. Difference between a darning needle and a regular needle is a darning needle is, has a blunter end than a sewing needle, which I much prefer the blunter end. I tend to stab myself a lot less with it. So we've got a darning needle here, our embroidery or Baker's twine, and we're going to do four times the length of this, two, three, and four, and then we'll just cut that. Perfect. So depending on how you like it to look and what you want, how much of this you wanna see, how little of it you wanna see, I like to see it and I wanna see it, and I'm gonna tie it right in the middle here. So we're gonna start on the inside Go through all of our signature pages and then through our cover. So I like to leave about that much because then we're going to tie it all together in the end. And then we're just going to stitch up, stitch back, stitch up and tie it in the middle. So we've got it down through the center, then up. All right, so I can see that this is going to get in my way and drive me crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my clip and we're just gonna clip that onto the outside so that it doesn't get in my way. Now we're gonna go up through the next hole. Up through the next hole and up through all of our signature pages. This out of my way. Perfect. So 
So what you can do to make sure that this doesn't come out is leave it long enough that you can put another clip just to hold that down. That's completely up to you. After you've got a few of your stitches in, then it's not going to pull at it anymore. So you'll be okay. All right, so at this point, I'm just going to keep making sure that our signature is straight and is in there exactly where I want it to be before I pull this too much tighter. Perfect. And I'll clip it again over here, clip that with it. And now we're going to sew back down so that we have a firm line all the way down and all the way up and it's not the skip stitch look, which is not what I'm going for in this project. And then up through this hole. Down through the middle. And now we're gonna start working on the bottom. down and the last one And now we're going to head back up to give it that finished look. All right, so from here, so we want to tie these two ends together. Now, this is going to get covered right now. We're just going to put our needle underneath this first stitch we did here. Pull it real snug. And now we're going to tie these two ends together. If you had wanted, you could leave a little bit more here and tie it into a bow if that's the look you like and would like to do. I just want to leave mine. I'm going to triple knot it, in fact. There we are, then I will trim this. And I want mine to be left about this long. You can leave it longer, you can have them different lengths, whatever you like. That's what I want. And there we have it. So now we have our signature sewn into the cover. You, if you had used a solid color, obviously you wouldn't get this stripey look, which I love. I'm really happy with how that's turned out. So now I will close up my journal, show you how it looks with the closure that we did put on. There we have it. So now our journal is ready for us to decorate and embellish and put whatever you want on it, fill it with pictures. I hope you have so much fun. I will take this with me on my next trip and fill it as we go. So for every day, I'll write a little something about what I'm doing. Um, I'll stick my pictures in here. There you have it. All right, so now it's time to decorate the cover of my journal. I have chosen just a few of these tickets that I thought were really cute. I'm going to arrange them on the cover like that. And I like this tape measure underneath. And then I've got a few pieces for the back. 
So when I'm decorating the cover, I'm going to open it all the way up to the center and then just lay it flat. Make sure, double check that you've got it going the right way. You don't want to get your cover all decorated and then realize you've got it backwards. Next thing I do is I will put this, uh, sort of mark it just so that I kind of know what I'm looking at. So I laid it all out before. So I'm going to have this one coming across here and then I'm just going to have the three little tickets in the corner. Thank you. 